I made a video where I compared my old reverb units to reverb plugins. I had a lot of people ask if I would do a video comparing modulation units to modulation plugins, but I don't really have much by way of modulation units. However, I do have a lot of chorus guitar pedals because I love putting chorus on guitar. And I've always felt like the chorus pedals sounded better than the chorus plugins. So today, I'm going to compare chorus pedals against chorus plugins and challenge my assumptions on that. Now, before I get started on this, I'd just like to say that there's no way to be totally scientific about this. Just to remove as many variables as I can, I want to make sure that all the comparisons I'm doing with the same performance so that instead of playing the guitar over and over again and maybe having one time I'm playing a little louder or a little quieter or whatever, it's always going to be the same performance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the guitar and split it and record a DI dry signal just of the guitar and then I'm going to reamp that back out through my rig. Now I already tested this and I dropped it in there and flipped the polarity and it pretty much phased out. You know what I'm saying? So it's darn close. If that's not good enough for you, sorry. I'm really just having fun here. And it's just a way to get a general idea about how the pedal sound compared to the plugins. All right, let's move on. This is a song by the Tokyo Teens called Tears. The delay that you're hearing, that's in Ableton. So all the takes, regardless of whether they're coming from my rig and through a pedal or the plugins, they're gonna have the same delay, but that's in Ableton. I'm going to be auditioning all the chorus pedals first, then we're gonna look at the plugins, and then we'll compare them against each other. I pulled this out, I hadn't used it in years. I got this in the 80s, and this is a Boss CE2. Unfortunately, it doesn't work anymore. I'm really bummed about it, and I was so excited about trying this one out. But I do have this, check this out. So right here, I've got a Boss CE5. It's got stereo outputs, and I've decided that on any of the pedals that have stereo outputs, I'm going to use those because they're going to need to compete with the plugins, which are pretty much all in stereo. Normally, I would just do this in mono if I was playing through an amp. So let's listen to this. Now, normally, I would have, on my old boss pedal, just kind of had the speed and width kind of like that. I got the effects on max right now. Can blend it in a little bit. I would have had something like that. It's kind of cool. Sometimes a fast speed with just a low depth is really cool. But like I said, I tend to like things a little more sweepy. And the other thing that's cool about this is the filter. It's flat when you've got it turned all the way to the right, but you can cut the high end of the coursing. Makes it a little darker. It's not a huge difference to me. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah, it's taking off some high end. Let me hear it in the mix. I like that. So let me go ahead and record that in. The next photos I'm going to try out are on loan to me from my friend Kevin Spencer, who's got a group called Electric Avenue. They're really awesome. You should go check them out. He drove all the way out here to bring me this pedal, which is ASDC's GNI pedal, an analog chorus pedal. It's a dual chorus pedal, and I'll explain that in a minute. And he also brought me this. This is the New Neighbor Inspire tri chorus pedal, which is pretty cool as well. So let's hook these up and check them out. This is the ASDC GNI Stereo Chorus. This is a true analog chorus pedal using Bucket Brigade circuitry. And what's cool about this thing is it's kind of like having two chorus pedals in one. You've got one setting up here and one down here, and you can switch between them to get two different chorus sounds. And it's also got this energy knob, which we're going to check out in a second. So let me play the guitar part with it off, and then we'll turn it on. That's without it. Here it is with it. Now this energy knob is what I find interesting. It definitely makes it a little louder, but it seems to add some grime to it. Okay, there it is with no energy. Now with energy. 
and it's also giving it a wider stereo image. And then you could switch to a different setting like this. Beautiful. So here's a setting I like. I'm going to go ahead and record that in. Using channel one. Sounds great. This is the New Neighbor Inspire Tri-Chorus Plus. And it's an interesting pedal because, as you can see here, it's got a couple different chorusing modes. Also goes into like a, a vibrato type mode, a detune mode, and this little echo mode. And depending on what mode you're in here, this changes. Like in the chorus mode, it's tone. In the vibrato mode, it kind of changes the sound of the vibrato. In detune mode, it changes the amount of detune. I could do a whole video about this pedal. I'm going to focus on the chorus setting and the detune mode, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to start with chorus here. There it is without it. Let's punch it in. And I like bringing the tone down. It mellows it out a little bit. Yeah, if you bring the tone all the way up, it gets a little crunchy on the top end. All right, I'm going to record that in. I like where that's at. I like the way this one sounds. Now, I'm going to record in the detune sound. You get that sound dialed in real quick. All right, so let me record that in. Detune. Now the next pedal I'm going to try out is this Bad Dog Chorus by Washburn Guitars. I'd never heard of this pedal before and almost didn't hear it because I couldn't get this to work. Now I borrowed this from my friend Rick Austin who played in one of my bands in the 80s and he's a huge gear collector and dug this out of a pile of stuff in his living room along with all the other amazing pieces of gear that he has. The problem I had with this thing is I couldn't get the power supply to work. So I stuck a battery in it. I, I still couldn't get any signal off of it. And finally, what I tried doing was opening this up because I just didn't think maybe the sensor in here was being hit. So I realized if I just stick my finger in here and press on the button here, I could get it to work. So it's going to look a little goofy while I'm using it, but I think it sounds pretty cool. So let's check this one out. So here it is without effect on it. Okay, on. It actually kind of reminds me of my old boss chorus, especially this. If you go to a slow chorus, and you slowly speed it up, you know, it slowly gets faster, but it, it's got a wide range of these slow speeds. But when you get up here, all the fast stuff is kind of crammed into this small section right here. It's, it's a weird increase in speed. Uh, let me listen to this in the mix. I like this one a lot. Okay, I'm going to record that. This is the Chase Bliss Audio Warped Vinyl Vibrato and Chorus Pedal. And this is on loan from Justin Mullenix from the Risky Biscuit Band. He's letting me use this for this video. It'll do vibrato and chorus. Look at all these switches here. Now, one weird thing about this, 
the bypass, the switch is actually opposite. It's like it's like it's on when the bypass light is lit, which is weird to me. But anyway, it'll let you store presets and do all sorts of things. But right now, I'm just concentrating on getting a nice chorus sound. So I'm just going to spin some knobs till I get something I like, which is what I normally do anyway. I've had a couple times where I was messing with this and I got a sound and then I got away from it. And I didn't know how to get back. Like even these, like if you turn these up, it'll change the shape of the modulation. I don't want to get too far into it, but now I don't remember what sound I had. Gosh, I can't get back to my sound. I don't know what I had. I mean, that's, ah, hold on. Let me figure this out. Alrighty, I think I got my sound back, so let me record this. So the last chorus pedal I'm gonna show you is actually not a chorus pedal. It's the Digitech Whammy pedal. This is a mono unit. It's kind of like a octaver pitch bending pedal. You probably heard it before on records, especially Rage Against the Machine. But what I use it for is this. It's got this chorus setting on it. It's got a deep setting and the shallow setting. I normally put it like here. Kind of back it off a little bit. And it's kind of cool. It's a very simple unit. Just move the pedal to where I want it. It's got a cool little slap back delay on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and record this. And now let's take a look at some chorus plug -in. Wait, I just thought of something else. This is the legendary Yamaha SPX90, which became a favorite for many for using its reverbs on snare drums and also its modulation patches, especially number 15. I borrowed this from Justin Mullenix from the Risky Biscuit Band for another reverb video I'm gonna do, but I thought, let's try number 15 in this video. And this has been on so many records you might even recognize the chorusing effect on here. And this patch only had two parameters on it, speed and depth. I tended to like mine a little slower, so I'm gonna slow it down a little bit. Now let me put it in the mix. Nice. And then I remembered this. I bought this Roland SDE Digital Delay used in the early mid 80s. And at that time, the only outboard gear I had was this delay, a cheap mono compressor, a cheap mono spring reverb, and a little analog delay. So if I wanted to do any coursing on anything besides my guitar, I had to use this delay right here to achieve that. The highest amount of delay it would do was 669 milliseconds. But what I would do was this. I'd usually either try six milliseconds or 12 milliseconds. So I'd have it on six milliseconds. I would turn on my modulation, turn up the depth. And I would try doubling the time to make it 12 milliseconds. It's been a while since I've done this, so I'm trying to remember how I got my sound. Might have had the feedback down a little bit. Now I'm gonna go ahead and print that like that in mono, but I had a trick I used to use to actually make this a stereo delay. So what I would do is run a line out of the rear effects loop on the SDE, which gave me a duplicate output. I would send that signal to my analog delay and then the delay duplicate output to a second track. Then pan both of those delays apart from each other to create a stereo image. I don't have an analog delay. I'm actually gonna run this into the SPX90 and try to recreate the sound that I did back then. The analog delay I was using back then had a low frequency response, which in itself made it sound pretty cool. And this is gonna be a cleaner sound. So just to get a little closer, I went over here to the high end response of the delay and I'm gonna bring it down a little bit. It's 
It's pretty cool. Just like the old days. Okay, now we'll look at Chorus Plugins. This is the Universal Audio Boss CE1 emulation plugin. I really like this one a lot. It's also got a vibrato setting on it, but we're just gonna concentrate on the chorus setting for this video. I'm gonna play it first without the plugin turned on. Now here's the plugin. It's really nice, it's really wide and lush. My main issue with this plugin is that, as you can see here, there's only one setting for the chorus. This depth and speed over here is only for the vibrato. So it does speed it up a little bit and makes it more intense, but you can't control them separately. But it still sounds great. I'm going to go ahead and leave that setting there. I like that. This is the TAL Chorus LX, and it's the chorus that was implemented in their Juno 60 synthesizer emulator. This plugin right here is free. I'm gonna play it dry first. Now here it is with chorus number one on. And then here's number two. Or you can put them both on. I like this chorus a lot. Listen to it in the mix. This is really rich. I mean, usually I'd leave it on one. I don't know. I kind of like it on with both of them. This is the Universal Audio Ditronix Tri Stereo Chorus made by Soft Tube. Let me play this for you. There it is, dry. Here's the effect. It's really nice. Now, I actually went through the presets and found one that I liked and modified it a little bit. I really like that. I, I like this one a lot. It's got this enhanced function on here, which I, I turned up. Here it is in the mix. Let's slow it down just a little bit. And you know, what I've found as I've gone through all these plugins is that I'm Setting the speeds differently, kind of just based on the plugin, what I think sounds best for that plugin. I guess if I want to be scientific about this, I'd try to get all the plugins and pedals at the same speed, but kind of going off what I like for each unit. So once again, kind of hard to be scientific, but I'm kind of just doing it the way I think is best. All right, on to the next plugin. This is the Valhalla Space Modulator. I'm going to play it dry first. Oh, and it's a free plugin. All right, here it is wet. Nice. It's got a lot of different effects on it. It'll also do flangers, like I like this one here. And what I actually use this plugin for the most is this. It's kind of a weird reverb. I love that one. But it does a great chorus. I tend to start with this deep chorus here. Let me put it back in the mix. And this thing is very, very sweet sounding. I'm gonna stick with that setting. And here's another free plugin. The Baby Audio Magic Switch. And this was inspired by the choruses that were on the Roland Juno series of 1980s synthesizers, which always liked. And it's also included in their Super VHS plugin. It's literally just a mix knob. That's it, here it is dry. But it's, it's great sounding. And as you turn it up, it's, it's not just coursing. It's got a little cool grime in there that I like. I dig it. And last but not least, the built-in Ableton Stock Course plugin. I actually like this one a lot. It's pretty flexible. I have used this quite a bit. I dig that. All right, let's compare the plugins to the hardware. So I'm, I'm looking at this now and I'm realizing I might have <laughs> tried out too many different things here. I kind of got carried away. I've got six plugins on six different channels and then I've got 10 different instances of hardware that I recorded in. So it's going to be kind of hard to totally A-B them. I may have totally 
to myself on this video, but I'm going to dig in as best as I can. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by playing each track solo and just going through them real quick and you can hear them. I'm going to start off with the Boss CE5. <laughs> So now, let's put them in the mix. never ceases to amaze me how different things will sound once you put it into the mix. And what's surprising to me is that plugins and hardware that I thought I was going to love, I'm not loving so much. And I've been surprised by a couple of these, especially some of these free plugins. I think I'm just going to have to use a lot more. But I pared it down a little bit, not a whole lot. I got rid of the bad dog, which was cool, but just wasn't really holding its place. The space modulator was one of the surprises. I, I liked it, but it just never seemed to step up to the plate like the other ones were doing. The uh, Boss CE5, not so special. The Ableton Chorus, eh, it was all right. I got rid of the Digitech. It's just not as cool as I always had thought it would be now that I'm hearing it against these other ones. So it's out. Chase Bliss was just a little boring. So I'm going to play you my top contenders here. Kept the GNI because it's got... This has got this sizzle up there that I like. The magic switch, that's got some magic. That's just a nice sweeping chorus. Love that towel. The TAL is great. I just find that one interesting. And then here, it's like royalty. Love that. The Ditronics, it's just got a nice, I don't know, it just, it, there's just something in the, I can't even explain it. Love the detune. This sucker here. It's just got this thing going in the lower mid-range. And then of course the wide SDE stereo. Not so special, but there's some situations where I'm just gonna want something that's really wide. You know, it just occurred to me that what I had thought up till now were my favorite courses, whether they're pedals or plugins, did not make the final list. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. You know, when I started this thing, I had intended to include flanger and phaser pedals and plugins and actually started filming both of those, but this video ended up getting too long. So if you're interested, let me know in the comments. I'll go ahead and finish that up and put it out. In the meantime, remember to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and be unique. <laughs>